Hello and welcome. Today I show you how you can easily adapt Parkside batteries to pretty much any drill. In this case, it's a Dexter, but this works in on Makita, Ryobi, any really brand that you might have. So the first thing to have is a charger and battery from Parkside. Parkside is a brand made for little supermarkets, cheap stores with some things. Anyway, this is the adapter and this is the part of the battery from the old drill. So what I did, I removed the top of the battery from the old drill. So I will use this combined with the adapter to use the Parkside battery. In your case, this will be completely different probably. I'm not sure if you have Dexter drills. But um, these are a bit more difficult when it's like this, this towering thing that goes inside the drill. When the, uh, the, the drill accepts batteries that are similar to the park side when they slide in, it's much easier to do that. This is, uh, you can see how I actually 3D printed this model. The model links are in the description. I didn't make them. I just took them from um, this uh, website, Thingverse, I think it's called. And you will find the links there if you want to use them. I had to modify one of them and you will see at the end how I modified it. What I did, I used some parts from the old battery, as I told you before, the contacts and the top of the battery holder. I removed all the nickel cadmium batteries that were inside and I only kept the, the cov top cover and these contacts which are important to use if you have this type of model. If you have a different model, you have to keep whatever you have from your drill. And then uh, this, I have to... I have to put some terminals on the battery adapter. I use these fast on connectors. Like you saw the previous video when I when I got the battery, I just uh, removed the insulation. This is just electrical wire, just a regular mains wire. This, um, it could be a bit thicker. 1.5 millimeter thickness should be pretty good. This, I don't have a crimping tool for it, but I just use pliers to just make it neat a little bit. And I'll show you, you can uh, solder these terminals and then it's really good. You have the mechanical connection to the insulator, the mechanical connection to the, uh, to the copper, and then uh, you do like this soldering until you see the solder flows all the way to the other side. And then it's great. This is perfect like this. It's gonna it's gonna work really well. And I installed them in the 3D printed adapter. You will see later there is a bit of an issue with this, but it's easy to fix. So no big deal there. And I use this uh, thing. It's nice to use this uh, to remove the insulation so you don't cut the copper wires. I solder the wires to the terminals the original terminals, making sure that the the color, the red color or brown in this case is to the plus. So you kind of know uh, where is the positive terminal. So making sure in this case, for me, it's like this. For you, it might be totally different. So you have to uh, do it how you how it's better for your drill. And the colors used is up to you. Just I thought brown equals red, which is usually positive. These wires are not color coded for DC. DC should be black or red. A lot of hot, hot uh, melt glue. And uh, I will have to cut this part. And still I'm putting a bit more glue. I, I had to put glue to keep that those terminals in place and to cut the plastic you can use a just a soldering iron and make a line and then you do it like this flex it a few times and it's broken yep if you have any sharp corners now is the time to trim them off a bit so you don't injure yourself later or now even and this looks pretty good okay it doesn't look very appealing 
but it fits well. So I'm ready to test the battery. It works pretty well and you can check the battery. You should actually check the battery regularly because some drills they will not have the, the, the indicator that you need to re recharge the battery. So you rely on that. You see, now I have a problem. It doesn't work so well. I, even I plug it in and nothing happens. And this is what the second battery I had. I didn't really open that one, but I was thinking I might have to install these uh, clips to hold it in, but I can't really, it's also not much space. I find out, uh, I figured out what was the problem. These terminals were not long enough. They were not touching the terminals inside the battery as they should have. So I did a small trick here. <laughs> I put a bit of solder on them to make them hot. This is the only reason why I put the solder in here. I keep it there to, to get the terminal hot so it melts the 3D printed plastic around it. And then I do a bit of a hack, a bit of a trick. I pull the terminal out with the pliers and I make it longer this way. It won't have went so far on its own without heating it up and melting the plastic. And this worked really perfectly. I have to say it's um, pretty good how it worked. If you have the thicker terminals, I mean taller, those are even better, but these work fine. You saw the this, uh, the cables, the original cables, I'm not sure if uh, you saw them, but they were thin as the white one that you saw before. Okay, seems to be working. So they were not, you don't need to have so much uh, for this deal. For other tools, you might need more uh, current, more uh, metal, more copper there. So you might want to use the thicker terminals for those. But for a regular drill, which is not like a hand saw or anything crazy like that, it's fine. You see how I pull the terminal and it's nice coming out. There was a bit of a problem on... Okay, there is a bit of plastic coming out there, but not too far, just a little bit at the base and the terminals from the battery don't touch there anyway. While I was warming it up, heating it up too much, one of them went a bit higher, it went a bit up because of the force. You see, it's the left one, it's a bit higher, so I was trying to put it back, kind of. It doesn't matter, the, the space for it is enough. You can clean it up with a bit of isopropyl or just a clean cloth. I didn't really use anything here. And this part, it's actually done. There is one more problem here. Yeah, now it's, it's perfect. It works really well, but I, I don't have the clips. The clips are not there. So the battery could just fall out and the hot glue will help us again. I, I could use screws, I guess I could make holes in this and use screws, but hot glue, it's fine, hot melt. And I put on both sides and then I warm it up with a, a lighter to make both sides uh, soft. Then I connect them together and then uh, they stay as they are. Putting a bit more hot glue, you can never have too much hot melt glue. This is really never too much. Okay, maybe you could have too much. Satisfying click. This thing is ready. Since making this video, I actually used this cordless drill a few times. It works amazing, even better than it used to. It used to be 18 volts, now it's 20 volts. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. And I'll see you next time. The weight is much less than it used to be with the old batteries, and it's working really perfect. 
Maybe I might have uh, made it a little bit more pretty, <laughs> uh, but okay, I don't really mind, so yeah. This is how I modified the 3D model, and uh, Roman, this is for you. Uh, I know you like this kind of uh, stuff, 3D, 3D modeling. This is Blender, and after changing the Blender, the model in Blender, and exporting it as an STL file, in Cura, Cura, this is a program for the 3D printer to make the actual, uh, the actual model for the 3D printer. And this, I had to flip it vertically because there wasn't enough space on the, there's not much space on this 3D printer at all. But eventually it worked like this and it shows, you can see how it would print the model exporting it. And then all I have to do from here is uh, take the file to the 3D printer and print it. It takes a while, but it will be ready. Thanks for watching and uh, thanks Roma if you see this. Subscribe, like and share and I will see you next time. Bye.